I want to get started right now with my take on the Ahmad Arbery trial going on in Brunswick, Georgia. Um, I, I, I can tell you right now from what I know, what I've seen, what I've heard, and I've followed this case as close as anybody else has followed it, uh, this was outright murder. There's, there's no doubt about it. The Ahmed, uh, Ahmad, rather, Aubrey, was, was murdered. Uh, the three men that accosted him there, whenever it was, they, it was, it was cold-blooded murder. But let me give you some background on this. I think it's important that, um, it doesn't mean that the jury is going to find that. I, uh, but let me, let me tell you how I've arrived at that conclusion. If the worst thing uh, was true, that is to say that they, these three men believed that, that Arbery was a burglar and that he was casing the joints, that he'd been, he had burglarized the neighborhood before. There had been burglaries in the neighborhood previously. He was running through the neighborhood. And, you know, that, and, and so as, as, as protectors of the neighborhood, neighborhood security watch, they uh, they saw him running, and maybe they thought they'd seen him once before. Um, even if that was all true, even if he was a burglar, and I'm not saying that he is. Don't let anybody uh, say that I'm calling the uh, the deceased Arbery uh, a burglar. I'm saying that's what the defense is alleging that they believe that he was. And he very well may have been. I don't know that he wasn't. I know he didn't live in that neighborhood. Strange for him to be running in that neighborhood that he didn't live in. Uh, but let's say it's true. The death sentence that they delivered to Ahmad Arbery was outright murder. Even if he was a burglar. Uh, it was inappropriate. Um, and not only that, but Arbery posed no physical threat to those three men. He didn't have a weapon. It was three against one. They were loaded for bail with shotguns and military apparatus. They had a vehicle. They had unity. Uh, that was murder. That was just outright murder. Now, Aubrey could have been a burglar. He could have been, he could have been casing the joint. But they are guilty, guilty, guilty of murder. That, now, that's my take. I don't know what the jury is going to find. I have no idea what the jury is going to find. But my friends, it was, it, it, even if they thought he was a burglar, they had the truck, they had the vehicle, they could have, you know, three of them, they could have strained him and hogtied him, you know, and kept him there until the real popo police got there. They, they could have done that uh, to, to, uh, to us to kill him or assassinate him or as some say to lynch him. They're guilty. Now, and their defense is they, they thought he was a burglar. That still doesn't give them the right to kill him. It doesn't give the police the right to kill him. He's unarmed. You know, so I, it's, it, 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 that's, that's my take on that. I thought you would want to know that. I don't see the reason to belabor this uh, any longer than, than what I've said. Let's see what the jury finds. You've got, you know, a pretty, scant jury and, it, and it's termed that racially it's all mixed. But I, I tell you, I have faith, even though the 11 Japheth people and one Hamite, I have faith in the Japheth people. I really do believe that they're, they're decent people who will look at this matter and they will discover where the truth is at. The, I, 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 I believe that they're guilty. I do. Um, as I said before, he could have been casing the joint. He could have been just running and not casing anything, never burglarized anything. I don't know. That's what they're alleging. But that's not a defense. That's not a reason to take a man's life. I, it just ain't going to fly. It just isn't going to fly. It went anywhere at any time. However, I believe that even though the jury is, um, is you know, pretty much J5 jury, you're in Georgia. I, I still believe they're good people. Um, I've had the opportunity to travel all around America with J5 people. And they're, they're unlike what you hear from the race baiters and the, and the haters from the Hamite community, they are really, truly good, strong-hearted J5 people. They're really good. They're really, they are really, I mean, and 
many times you find Japheth people are reacting. They're not, they're not openly trying to be difficult towards Hamites, but they're reacting to all of the rhetoric. When a good-hearted Japheth person sees a, a black man like Arbery, they figure he's been doused with the teachings of Al Sharpton or Malcolm X or somebody. And even if they want to be nice to him, they, they're afraid to do so, and they feel the best defense is to act violently or to def act defensive. Not to be sure that yeah, you got good and bad people, if you will, uh, in all races. There's no doubt about that. Uh, and there are probably some bad J for people. But I want to tell you, I mean, my experience in America, having grown up a sharecropper, grown up Jim Crow, you got good J for people, people who have good hearts, people who believe in humanity, people who believe God. Uh, but this whole business out here now, and the reason why you see more J for people uh, having more anger and defense mechanisms um, against Hamite people is because of race betas like Obama and Al Sharpton, who and they all, they don't see the good people that are Hamites, you know, that are that are that are willing to you know to give a man his 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 character judgment, not the color of his skin. They don't see those people. What they see or the likes of Al Sharpton on their televisions in, in Georgia, South Carolina, Arkansas, Mississippi. They see Al Sharpton. They don't see good men. They don't see me. They see Al Sharpton. So when they see any other black man come into their neighborhood, they think he's a representative of Al Sharpton. And, and that's just human nature. It, it's just human nature. Doesn't make them bad people. So I believe that the, 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 even the jury has an opportunity. I don't know how, how they're going to vote, what they're going to come back with. I have no, I, but I think that those three men that killed Aubrey are guilty. But let me say something about Al Sharpton. I'm going to let you go. You know, Al Sharpton is poisoning. Y'all got to stop that boy. You got to stop him. He is poisoning, just like I said a few moments ago. He makes every white person think that all black people, you know, or the next Michael Brown, or the next uh, Trayvon Martin, or, or whoever. All white people see all black people as, as violent because Al Sharpton. We got to stop it. I'm telling y'all, y'all black people, y'all got to take Al Sharpton down. You got to stop him. That boy's out there on television. He's before, I mean, Washington Post, New York Times, CNN, MSNBC. They eat that boy up. They get that boy more part television time than they do the president. And he's just poisoning in America. He's poisoning America. He's poisoning the amount of white folk and the amount of black people and causing the biggest race baiting, race hating, race. I'm telling you, we're enough Al Sharpton and Obama as well. You would not see all of this stuff going on. Probably Ahmad Arbery would be alive today. But people think he is a disciple, that maybe Arbery is a disciple of Al Sharpton. And so, this is, I, you know, I want to give Al Sharpton a new name. I've never, I'm, I'm, to date I haven't given him one. I call him the rat. But, you know, when something dies, falls dead, gets killed, lays in the street, or lays in the field, the buzzards come. They come from across the country, the buzzards. <laughs> Somehow or another, if something is dead within a thousand miles of a buzzard, they will fly across country to circle and eat the flesh of that dead, what a man, carcass, animal. They, the buzzards come. Well, I want to give Sharpton the name Al the Buzzard Sharpton because when somebody black dies, here come this buzzard Al Sharpton. This buzzard, he, he will fly thousands of miles to be at that dead, to pick on that flesh, to pick on the family, to pick on the circumstance. Al the Buzzard Sharpton, that's who he is. Al the Buzzard, that's who he is. But I'm telling you, Hamite, Japheth, and Shemite people, you got the, the, the man that's going to tear America up. He got, he got everybody thinking any black man walking down the street is going to molest, rob, or rape. And it ain't true. But Al Sharpton has been given the liberty to spread this hate. Listen, 
Ahmed Arbery might be alive today were it not for Al Sharpton having so much press time, media time, and everybody giving it to him. Obama gave him the vice presidency. That's right. Obama gave Al Sharpton the vice. Oh, I know he had Joe sleeping, Joe Biden as a vice. But hell, Al Sharpton was his vice president. And everybody knows Al the Buzzard was Obama's vice president. Now, one other thing. I want to give out one other name that I'm going to let y'all go. And that is this Ben Crump boy. I understand he comes down there in North Carolina. I, he's another one now. Here he comes. When somebody dead or dying, he's down there in Nine Houston with the dead in that, that concert down there the other day with Travis Scott. He down there hugging and kissing and representing family. I want to call Ben Crump, Ben the Undertaker Crump. Ben the Undertaker and Al the Buzzard. These people got to stop the tearing up America. They're destroying the lives of young men. They're prejudicing the, the, the beliefs and the potential for, for, for us to work together as a people for truth. For real talk about bringing the relation, the races together until you get rid of Al the Buzzard Sharpton, Barack Hussein the long legged Mac Daddy Obama, who's the president, and Al the Buzzard Sharpton, who acts as his vice president, and Ben the Undertaker Crump. Gotta get rid of them. There ain't no be no peace in the valley. And some other young man gonna die because he thinks that Al Sharpton somehow another gonna protect him. And MSNBC should be labeled, I got to think of a name for them. I'll be back with a name for them. But they should be called the Racist Hypocrite Horror Show or the Horror Network. How on earth can any decent journalist sit across the table from a snitch in drug deals in Harlem with the mafia? How can any credible credible person sit across the table and, and dialogue with Al Sharpton as if he has a right to speak truth to the American people regarding events. How can any, what the hell is MD, MSNBC thinking about? But yet they let him, who has been labeled by the FBI as a snitch, and he snitched because he was involved in drug sales, to people in Harlem. And they let him go if he snitched, because he snitched on the mafia. And yet, he's honored with the position as sitting across uh, uh, from a teleprompter and got a, got a show on the weekend. And MSNBC and the media people let MSNBC get away with it. And then worse than that, the boy can't read. Al Sharpton, Al the Buzzard, can't read. You see him? <laughs> I mean, hell, I thought he was rapping. <laughs> I thought he'd broken out into a rap. <laughs> you know, he can't read. The man can't read a lick, can't read. And yet, with all that baggage in his background, unrepentably, there he is as the alleged vice president and an anchor on MSN. By the way, MSNBC, Brian Williams is leaving. Brian Williams, I was wondering when the hell you're going to get up out of MSNBC. I wonder when some of the rest of y'all, Chris Matthews left. I wonder when some of the rest of them going to leave. You know, and with that, that, that is about the sorriest, racist, hypocritical horror network I've ever seen anywhere. When the rest of y'all going to leave MSNBC? I mean, the, the place is a doghouse. It is, it is, it is, it's, it's un-American. They wouldn't let the likes of an MSNBC and the characters with Al the Buzzard Sharpton in a third world nation. At any rate, Listen, I, 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 I had a, a shot of Al, but I ain't going to show you. 
I don't know what's going to happen in the Auburn trial. I don't know. I, I, think these, I think those three men are guilty. That's what I think. But I think our real problems are not those men. I think it's the problem of race baiters, race, head, race haters, people that get paid millions and millions of dollars to spread racial hatred to color all black men as Trayvon Martins and Michael Browns to color, to color all black men, no matter whether he's a preacher or a lawyer, go when a white man see him, he don't know that. All he knows is that he gets a dose of Al Sharpton everywhere he turns around. You see Al Sharpton out there talking about this and talking and pontificating and celebrating Dr. King and trying to be able to be the new Dr. King. You got to stop him. A whole lot of more black people going to die. Your son, your grandson might die. And the other thing is that those of y'all from the Jaffa community got to realize your son may have to shoot somebody that's Hamite because of this rhetoric, this race baiting that I shot. Y'all got to get together and stop him. Stop him. Stop Al the Buzzard and Ben the Undertaker. Stop him. Stop him now before it's too late. Me, I'm James David Manning, everybody. I'm the Lord's servant. 